Salem, Massachusetts in the 1600s may have been an important port because of trade with East India. Shipping merchants built lavish mansions in town. However, the legacy of Salem is dominated by the witch trials. The delusion, the hysteria begins in a reverend's house. It's Reverend Samuel Paris's home. And he has a young girl named Betty who's nine, a niece named Abigail who's 11. And they begin to exhibit strange symptoms. They begin to writhe on the floor. They begin to bark like dogs. They begin to scream profanities. They begin to clutch embers from the fireplaces. They begin to throw the embers around the room. And it's concerning the reverence, concerning the neighbors. There's probably some gossip already flying. This is happening somewhere January, February 1692. Somewhere in there this is beginning. The doctor's called in. He looks over the young girls and he gives the diagnosis of bewitchment. He says an evil hand is upon the girls. The cause of this is is the devil's work. Everybody begins to talk. You know, the, the daughter of the of the reverend is bewitched. The niece of the reverend is bewitched. What are we going to do to uh, to alleviate this 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 knot of witchcraft that might be upon us? And so what happens is a white woman, very lily white woman named Mary Sibley, who is a member of Reverend Paris's own church. She lets herself in, very presumptuously, to Reverend Paris's home after he and the wife leave, we assume. And she instructs Reverend Paris's slave, Tichiba, and her husband, John Indian, or one of the two at least, to make young Betty and Abigail, the afflicted girls, to make them a witch cake. And what you do is you take Betty and Abigail, you make them urinate, you boil their urine, and you put it into a rye mixture. And you swirl it around, you bake it on the coals of a fireplace, and you feed this witch cake, as they call it, to a dog. The dog will eat it and hopefully break the spell. And they believe that the teeth of the dog will hit the witch's specter, which is trapped in the girl's waters. Maybe you'll read the symptoms of the dog. Maybe the dog will be uh, hobbling around. Maybe the witch will be hobbling around. All these things could happen. So they make the cake, and they get much worse. The witch cake, to me, is the spark point. Because Reverend Paris says it plainly. He says, by the making of this witch cake, Satan was loosed on Salem. His rage is vehement and terrible, and when he shall be silenced, the Lord only knows. A few days later, we assume the fingers are pointed, and one of the first accused is Tichiba, who is Reverend Paris' own slave woman. Out of fear, the people related witchcraft to Satanism. Gossip would spread around town. It has existed for thousands of years, predating monotheism. But what really is witchcraft? Uh. Witchcraft is a religion, um, but before uh, people called it their religion, it was their way of life. And in, in, that, in being that way, the herbs, the earth, everything around them was part of their healing and their, their way of life. Uh, the herbs have kept people alive for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. To me, witchcraft is two things. There's a religious aspect of it, and then the working craft aspect of it, which is working with the herbs and stones and my tarot card divination, and the religious aspect, which is honoring the goddess and the gods. As far as my divination goes, I specialize in tarot cards, where in other aspects, some people do ace reading, crystal ball readings, different type of divination work. Some of them do all of it, and then people like myself who just specialize in one. But being a male witch, is no different for me than being a female witch. I mean, it's like any other religion. There are male and females in, in both. Many of us today grew up with the stereotypical green Halloween witch. But where did these images come from? One of the stereotypes about witchcraft that comes about is, you know, a witch riding on a broom. And where that comes from is a lot of these pagan women, when they planted their seeds, instead of bending over and planting them individually, oftentimes they would sprinkle them on the ground that they had sown and then use a broom to sweep this, sweep the dirt over that to grow their seeds. So simple farming method, really. And during these times of harvest, which witches have um, typically eight sat, what are called sabbats, which are different times of the year that are good for, for magical purpose. Um, you know, you may heard of like spring and uh, fall equinox, winter and summer solstice. These are four of them. So four times of the year when the seasons change over that are best for planting in old paganism now best for working magic in modern Wicca. But um, typically on maybe the autumnal equinox, you would a witch would go out, well, witch in the eyes of the church, this woman would go out and maybe 
use her broom and jump as high as she would signify for her crops to grow. So um, if you're going past and you're seeing this woman jumping up and down in the field, it would later be skewed that she was trying to use her broom to take off. So that's where some of that stereotype comes from. But a lot of the stereotyping with witches came about because of this changeover to the Catholic and Christian religion. The long conical hats, the tall, the tall hats that um are usually shown with witches are a corruption of a Puritan steeple crown hat. So the kind of old hats that would be worn in England, beaver fur hats, other hats like that, tall black uh, fur felt hats. That's we assume where the witch hat comes from. And originally it's with a buckle too, like Puritan hats. And early English hats would have had buckles. A lot of witches here, you know, embrace the history, but some, I think, tend to try and um, push for moving away from the stereotypic view of witches. A lot of them get offended, I know, about, you know, the witch, the image of the witch on the broomstick on cop cars around here. The reason that herbalism, witches, everything has been betrayed in a negative way is because you have to look at the misogyny of the, uh, of the era. During the Middle Ages, men were going to school to be doctors. They were doing the same thing that women had been doing for hundreds and thousands of years, uh, bringing children into the world, healing their ills, getting them through uh, the, the battles and the wars, and uh, if they lived long enough, they buried them. Doctors were now uh, feeling a little, um, they were feeling that, you know, here they were going to school, they were more educated, they were the upper they were the upper class, and how dare these women, you know, think that they knew more. The, and the fact that the people were going to them was an insult. In the 1970s, Salem began to market or feature Halloween. Today, Salem has a unique concentration of witches. It has become a huge tourist attraction as well. This is almost like a safe haven for some witches, though. They can come here, they can, you, you can walk down the street here with a cloak on, with a cape, whatever. And nobody's gonna think too much about it. Whereas you do it in other cities, you know, different other places, and people might look at you a little bit funny. But they're more accepted here. And the spirituality goes back to the, I say, back to the Salem witch trials, to the 19 people that were, you know, wrongly executed here. I should say the 20, because there was one more that was executed in Boston, but you never hear about them. Many years back, when you went into the 60s and early 70s, even through the 70s, Salem was not a witch-friendly city. This was not a, it's not like what you see today. There was not a lot of stores like this. Back in the 60s and early 70s, there wasn't a lot of, there was no witch stores in Salem, things like that. And witchcraft was basically done in somebody's kitchen, somebody's basement, uh, practiced on a beach in the middle of the night when there was nobody around, uh, secret spots in the woods when nobody could find you, something like this, because it wasn't accepted like it is today. Salem has come a long way from persecuting and executing accused witches. Witches are now embraced, but how did the witch trials come to an end? On September 22nd, uh, eight are hanged all at once, and that's a lot of people. You have 20 executed all together, but eight on one afternoon. And, it, and I think it's pretty trying for a lot of people who are witnessing this. You have Nicholas Noyes, the junior minister, goes up to the hill and makes a pretty dark pronouncement, pretty dark phrase he gives up, and he says, what a sad thing it is to see eight firebrands of hell hanging there. And that statement really begins to chip things away, and then the governor's wife is accused of witchcraft. Lady Phipps, and that's the straw that broke the Campbell's back. What the governor does is he dissolves this court, the special court of Oyar and Termin, a court that means to hear and to determine. What he does is he sets up a new court, uh, the court of judicature, and on this new court, they don't allow spectral evidence. So without spectral evidence, you don't have anything to stand on, really. And um, as a result, the court just chips away at these cases, nothing really comes as a result, there are no hangings that come as a result of this new court, and it just fades away. You also have the reversal of attainer being put forth in 1711. The reversal of attainer 
pretty much reverses the charges of witchcraft on some of the names, not all. And it isn't until 2001, on Halloween night, our governor, Jane Swift, reproves the last as innocent. Salem is no ghost town anymore. People embrace its heritage and tourists love to visit, especially during Halloween. Salem, of course, has the witch trials. And 1692 and the witch trials is what made Salem what it was. So that's why I think they come here, they find the spirituality here, they find acceptance here, and that's why, of course, Salem is associated, you know, known around the world, associated with witches.